how do you bring the best of the container world to the best of the telecom world? Cloud native containers is just a natural evolution or virtualization. Kubernetes is the de facto standard, right? It's open source. Cloud native is key. Four years ago, cloud native was not a very well-known term. Kubernetes was one of many orchestrators and it was a little unclear where, how much penetration it was going to gain. And now it's really the default, de facto way of running most workloads in the cloud. Cloud native approach uh, has a series of principles and methodologies that really helps you hit that scalability, but at the same time keep your costs under control. Portability, reusability, efficiency, burstability. These are topics that are really, really important to telcos. And that's why cloud native is really important to them. If you're launching a new brand, a new service, then I think there's a real case for, for using cloud because of its inherent benefits in terms of elasticity, scalability, if you want to trial new stuff out there. And one of the things that we really get out of using something like Kubernetes is, you know, you hear a lot about skill shortages and resource shortages. You know, all of a sudden the telcos, by using some of these technologies, have access to what's being produced by all the engineers of the hyperscalers, you know. Google and, and, and Amazon and, and Microsoft, you know, have, have a global cloud footprint. And, and with that scale, they've got the skills to build a stack that is incredibly rich, uh, incredibly powerful, attractive to developers. So the question is, how, how can tel telcos benefit from that that technology base. The more we make networks cloud native, uh, the easier it's going to be to interwork in between hyperscale cloud and telco and FB the deployments. I think cloud native is, is really the, the thing that makes it at scale. Virtualization delivers a lot of benefit, but to be able to scale, also to bring it into the 5G context, IoT and all these um, kind of things, and that's where cloud native really plays. Welcome everyone to the Lerma Museum and to Telecom TV's annual super panel, sponsored as always by Hewlett Packard Enterprise and Intel. Those of you who have been with us before know what to expect. For those of you joining for the first time, uh, a very warm welcome. Please enjoy the refreshments, the food, the cars. It's an amazing collection of cars to have here, but not just yet, because we want to kick things off first keep you in suspense, keep you waiting, with a 30-minute panel discussion, and we'll follow that up with a Q&A, so you'll all have a chance to put your questions to our guests um, after we have our discussion. And as you'll have seen from the video, we've got a very timely topic for you this evening. From NFE to cloud native, future-proofing your 5G investment. And we're going to be hearing a lot more about cloud native, no doubt, in the, in the months to come. Let me introduce you to our panelists first, starting on my immediate right with Vicky Lonka. Welcome, Vicky. Vicky is Vice President of Product Management and Development at Verizon. And next to Vicky is Domenico Convertino, VP Product Management, Communications and Media Solutions at HPE. Yeah. Welcome back to Super Panels. It's me. Next, we have Adrian Comley. Your first time with us, and you're very welcome. Uh, General Manager of Dynamic Network Services at BT. Next to Adrian is Renu Navale. Welcome back again. Renu is Senior Director, Edge Services and Industry Enabling at Intel's Data Center Group. And last but by no means least, we have Alexis Sars, who is Head of Network Cloud and Virtualization at Orange Group. Alexis, thanks for joining us. Welcome, everyone. Um, the telco transformation journey has got well and truly underway with, with NFV, but it's, it, it's only the start. The process is continuing with the adoption of cloud native technologies and methodologies as service providers evolve into DSPs, digital service providers. But what do we actually mean by cloud native? What is cloud native to us? And more importantly, what is the cloud native telco? So why don't I ask each of you in turn for, for views on cloud native. Vicky, let's kick things off. Well, you know, I, I think I'm struggling right now with what cloud native is not <laughs> because I'm squarely grounded right now in a place where NFBI is sort of where we're, we're deploying functions in, in that space um, because the concepts that I care about as an operator around networks are, are understood in that, that particular space. But in, the cl in cloud native uh, concepts, 
you know, like ports mm -hmm. and the things that I care about, WANs and LANs and interfaces and things of that nature are not uh, native and cloud native. Mm -hmm. And so until those concepts become something that we can translate between the two, uh, I think it's going to be tough to adopt that as a, as a green field for us. So I think for, for me it's a hybrid world that we're going to have to manage for quite a long time. Domenico. Well, cloud native means many things, but fundamentally microservices based, stateless, very easy to instantiate, quick to retire, so all the scaling to be really <clears throat> instantaneous. And uh, the most important thing is, again, this is history of the stateless, so that is very easy to instantiate multiple instances of uh, whatever network function in the cloud native core so that uh, there is no dependency from uh, having uh, data associated to the single instance of the network function, but uh, really, mm -hmm. in the spirit of the cloud, having the ability to share the data that are common across a data layer for all, uh, for all the function. This will help, even the delocalization, de will, this will help uh, the distribution of the network and applications and will provide the new capabilities to the, to the future core networks. Yeah. And Adrian, how do you see the cloud native telco? Yeah, so, so I'm a product guy, so I'm, I'm probably going to approach it slightly differently, perhaps from my, my fellow panelists. But um, I would see this in terms of what it means for our customers. So yeah, we've got the abstraction, we've got infinitely scalable hardware, uh, but we're not quite there in terms of microservices running in containers, as far as I'm aware, anyway. Uh, so as far as our customers are concerned, I think what they're looking for is something that looks and feels like a service they buy from an AWS or an Azure, uh, where they want something that is very scalable. It's a, a different kind of commercial model, and that could be pay-as-you-go type approach, moving away from the traditional rental and connection model that they've tended to buy things from, especially network products from their telco. Um, so I think for, for a telco, it, it's a fundamental change in the telco system stack that enables us to develop products for our customers that are far more agile and flexible with different commercial models than ever before. Great. Thanks, Adrian. Renu. Sure. And I'm going to build on what both, both of uh, you know, our panelists just said. It, it is cloud-native microservices. It is about service agility. Uh, but it's also about you know, having your organizations, your processes, your methodologies, your design principles all follow cloud cloud architectures, models, um, as well as economics, uh, so that you, you are truly delivering, um, delivering the, the service agility while at the same time keeping your costs really low, um, keeping your d development methodologies extremely agile um, and flexible in order to be able to deliver the um, agility that our customers need. Right. And Alexis. So being the last one is more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Find something new to say. <laughs> for me, what is maybe missing for us, or what we want, is to have a standardized solution in order to keep this optimization of the cost and the operations to provide you new services, is to have a multi-vendor ecosystem. And for this, we did a standardized solution and also interconnection with other operators in order to have a, a solution that can rely on scalability in the solutions. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's the business, the operations, this uh, possibility to provide to the customers and try and buy solution, but also um, to have an ecosystem that we can have partners to change partners and to have this multi-vendor ecosystem. Mm -hmm. We're going to touch on ecosystem uh, a little bit later, but th this isn't a case of cloud native arriving on the scene and pushing aside all the work we've done on NFE. You, you, you alluded to the um, hybrid operation going mm -hmm. forward with Verizon. Yeah, I think that's going to have to be true because um, it, I think it is a much heavier lift than people imagine and who, who, who build applications for the cloud to understand that those um, same applications have to work in networks and network architectures are very different than cloud architectures. And cloud architects don't necessarily understand network architects. So all the same challenges we had when we first started doing virtualization and we took the principles we learned from data center virtualization and ported those over to network virtualization really have to be true too because the virtualization is only one aspect of the problem. So uh, any views on about how we're going to see cloud native adoption alongside our existing NFE investments? 
I guess one thing, going back to what we were talking about earlier about microservices running on containers, then if you, if you kind of Google cloud native, it says, well, actually what you want to do is, is move away from the traditional VNFs, which were born out of splitting software and hardware by, by the, the vendors, um, and break those VNFs up into microservices. So having core components within the VNF that then discover each other and build on each other, kind of like Lego bricks. Um, so, I think, one, we're not there yet, uh, but two, I think that's the evolution path for, mm. for VNFs. It's smaller, more reusable components. And then you can apply that to um, wider services as well. So, for example, for a, for a telco, that means uh, logistics, getting a piece of kit from uh, a manufacturer to a customer site, whether that's um, a UCPE or a server or whatever it might be. But just that action then becomes a small um, uh, reusable component that you can build into bigger products. Are we, are we missing anything at this stage? Are, are we saying as a, as a community of, of telcos, we are an, a unique user case uh, and we have our own requirements that may or may not all fit with the, the cloud native models? Ah, this is even an excuse that we had uh, hmm. so many times to not change and to not innovate that probably... No, I would say that <clears throat> uh, virtualization has been a step because we are coming from a world of appliances and from a world that was heavily standardized. So we, we used the virtualization to decouple the infra layer from, uh, from the application layer, but reality is that uh, when we are speaking about cloud native, we are speaking about a completely different type of software architecture that is much more flexible and dynamic. At the end of the day, it has to answer uh, demand from customers to have much more uh, dynamicity and the ability to scale uh, in, a, in a completely different uh, way and agility for the services that we are providing uh, to them. This is something that the cloud native architecture can provide to us, but at the end, it doesn't work if at the end of the day, it is not proven to be uh, free from any type of lock-in from whatever type of vendor. And at the end of the, of the day, it needs to be operated, right? So when we are saying uh, we wasted time with virtualization because cloud native is better, it's not true because our operation guys, they made a lot of experience during this year and you need the time to transfer people and skills. It's not something that is happening overnight just because there is you know, a fancy technology that, that you, know, you want to promote and push, uh, and push on production. So there are a number of skills that have been created uh, in, uh, in the operation departments, the, but this is just a journey that needs to continue because the cloud will be even more demanding on um, skills that are less, let's say, old telco uh, oriented and much more, uh, much more going towards the composability uh, of, uh, of the software, right? Alexis, you, you, you're nodding agreement. For the virtualization, it's a way to modify the organization, the way we work inside the company, but also with the partners, and to move to a collaboration in order to have a focus on the customer, focus in the operations, and not as before in the appliance more, a world that is more, I request for each vendor a delivery, I work with SLAs, penalties, and uh, a long way to reach and to match the uh, customer requirements. At the end now, it's the flexibility to provide these developments to the customer. And uh, uh, the idea is to be ready for the 5G in the future. So this transformation is key to provide all the expectation that we have with this 5G. <laughs> yeah. I think as a technology provider from an Intel perspective, uh, what, we, what I believe is that these technologies will coexist for a long time to come. If there are, uh, you know, like for example, VNFs or virtual machines, uh, the agility is good enough, the performance is good enough, why would you change it un unless there is a real business need to actually re-architect that? But if there are certain functions that do need the agility, that you do need to transform into cloud native in order to deliver the services agility or the business impact, then you will see the ecosystem and you will see the vendors actually changing their architecture to accommodate those business needs. So I think, I think you're going to see a coexistence of these technologies for a long time. It's not as if you're going to just completely wash away the investments you know, we've made up until now.